Okay. Um, speaking of Vegas, uh, Chris Carroll, the first responder when the shooting happened with Tupac and Shug, um, he made a uh, he he made a statement saying that there was a lot of violence and homicides at Club Six Six Two. Um, can I get your opinion and your thoughts on that? If it's different than his, ha! <laughs> In the parking lot, huh? Well, I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe he's talking about the history of the club prior to uh, Suge Knight and it becoming Club Six Six Two. That's the only thing that would make sense because most of y'all don't know. Club Six Six Two was only open six or eight times, and then one day for a video shoot for a St. Ives uh, commercial. That never came out. Got to find that. Y'all might like that. Uh, to my knowledge, it might be because I know you internet motherfuckers be finding everything. But there was three Tyson fights. We opened on Friday nights. Nobody was there. That when y'all see Tupac in there dancing alone and on, on the in the club and this party and stuff like that. That was our Friday night. We had just drove in, went to the club. It probably was two hundred people in there on Friday night. On Saturday night after the fight, shit, there was lines around the corner trying to get in Club 662. But like I said, three times, I believe it was only three times that the club was open. So three times on a Saturday night, two, three times on a Friday night. It's all Club 662. I didn't hear of any shootings or anything that happened at Club 662. The worst thing that happened that I remember was some fat chick was in there and she said that the heat was so hot when she passed out and she sued us and I think I ended up cutting her a check for $6,000 or $12,000 because she said she, she passed out and it was so hot in the club. She had no business been in there as big as she was in my opinion. But, and the second thing was uh, the boy from RZA, the guy from uh, Wu-Tang, getting his chain on. Uh, snatched in a fight or a scrump or a scrumple, which I always tell y'all, niggas getting their ass whooped, somebody gonna snatch a chain. But y'all, yeah, yeah, it's too deep for y'all. But that's what happened to RZA. You know, everybody wanna make it like Tupac, you know, Tupac went to Shug, say, hey Shug, man, you know, somebody took RZA chain when it was going on. Shug made a few calls with, or Buntry or one of the homies made a few calls and they got the chain back the next day. All that talking about coming and taking a fight and all of that, I ain't hear nothing like that. You know, RZA wasn't even that type of dude. So he wouldn't have been one that. He just wanted his chain back and get on. That's where the comparison come in to why, you know, you know, of course, uh, Tupac always said, hey, this is how you handle stuff. And this is what he was trying to show Biggie. If you got all this juice or alleged juice in your in your area, then you make things happen, you, or you make phone calls and make things happen. Um, so yeah, that's that's all that that happened on um, incidents at the club. So if he's talking about prior, because I think it was some gangster or some Italian mobster supposedly owned that club, that's you know, that's that's all he could be talking about. But I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, it wasn't no, uh, you know, no bunch of shootings or homicides before that rumors get started at Club 662 in the parking lot. Um, not one, not one. Um, so, yeah, that's my opinion on that and about that.